Hi, it's Dr. Lori, the PhD Antiques Appraiser, and I'm here with more real bargains. Bargains that everybody's finding, people like you, from thrift stores, estate sales, and antique shops. I want to start right off with this real bargain from a video call. So this video caller gets on the phone and says, Dr. Lori, I found this blackware pot, and I bought it at from a moving company who sells high-end goods. And I got a good deal, but I wanted to talk to you about it. So I said, yeah, I said, it's pretty typical. I've seen a lot of these. And I've seen a lot of these, and you've probably seen a lot of these. Many of you are probably saying, oh yeah, that's a Maria Martinez San Aldefonso Pueblo pottery pot, right? Is that what you're saying? It's marked on the bottom, it's pretty spe specific. And you think to yourself, yeah, yeah, I know what those are, right? These are the types of real bargain items that people will say, oh yeah, you know, there's nothing worth anything out there. You can't find anything. Everything's picked over. Here are the real bargains. I want you to get it. Even those pieces that may seem familiar to you, they're worth a lot of money. Watch. This piece is quite rare. Here's why. First of all, it's marked Marie and Julian. Maria Martinez was married to her husband Julian until his death in 1943. This pot is an old pot. It's not one of the ones from the 1960s or 70s for which she's known for. It is one that dates to between 1925 and 1935 and it's big. It's a big piece of blackware pottery for which Maria Martinez and Julia Martinez became very, very popular. Native American blackware pottery was really sparked by this interest in the early 20th centuries by this couple and others that followed within her family and her extended, of course, family within the San Ildefonso Pueblo. This piece is a great example of a real bargain. My client says, he does this for fun, he goes on his lunch hour, he buys stuff that he thinks might be fun to have around his house so he can remember the experience of shopping. Shopping is fun. It's fun to find these pieces. It's fun to get those pieces that are gonna look good in your home or that you might be able to resell for a profit. This piece he bought for $10 from that high-end high moving company. And what's it worth? $6,000. $6,000 sold to him for 10 bucks. It's a real beautiful object. It has all of those elements that we typically see with respect to the great blackware pieces and a real bargain too. This next real bargain is going to make you feel right at home. So this real bargain comes from a video call. And my video caller said to me, Dr. Lori, I go to a lot of estate sales and I needed some furniture for my new apartment. And I was looking at this piece and it was at the estate sale and it looked great. I said, it looks great now. It's in great shape. I said, did you reupholster it? Did you do anything to it? I said, I didn't do a thing to it. I said, it looks beautiful. I told her that it's a Chesterfield sofa. That's the style. It's tufted. It's all original leather. And it even has the mid-century modern round casters, the wheels, so you can wheel it. So you don't have to kind of lift it up to move it. You can just wheel it. She said, yeah, it really works great in my space. I got it at an estate sale. I said, okay. I said, so tell me about it. She said, well, I walked into the estate sale and they were asking $1,000 for it. And she said to me, I wasn't paying $1,000, Dr. Lori. I couldn't pay $1,000 for it. So I had to think of how I was going to negotiate with the estate sale hosts. I said, you've got to always think of ways to negotiate. She said, well, of course I want to just say, oh, is that your best offer? Oh, can you take a lower price? I wanted to say that. I was going to say that. But then I thought, well, what's going to be their problem? And I always say this, what's going to be their problem? Try to solve their problem. Well, for the estate sale folks, it's how do we get this big sofa out of here? That's their problem. Well, she said, I told them that if they took my offer of $300 for this sofa, where they were asking $1,000, and if they took $300 for it as my negotiated price, and I move it out of here right now, I'll take it right now, will they take the $300 for the sofa? And guess what, Dr. Lori? They took it. Well, that's a real bargain before I even tell you what the sofa is worth. The mid-century modern Chesterfield sofa, gorgeous condition, no tears, no rips, little scuff marks on the back, but in beautiful condition, this piece, the Chesterfield sofa is worth $6,000. Oh, it was a beautiful real bargain. A piece of mid-century modern furniture. She said, if I take it out of here immediately, I'll take it for 300 bucks. They got their piece out of the, the estate sale and she got a real bargain. What a beautiful, beautiful sofa. 
This next real bargain comes from the story of, of course, jewelry and buying jewelry in bulk. This video caller said to me, Dr. Lori, I bought jewelry in bulk and I basically purchased a bag of jewelry weighing 10 pounds. So it was just by weight. So it was all different types of jewelry, all different types of pieces, pins and necklaces, earrings and bracelets and whatever. I didn't know if I had silver or gold or if I had costume jewelry or fine jewelry. I didn't know any of that. It's just 10 pounds. That's what I get. So I said, okay, so you get all of this for one set price. Yes, all of this for one set price. All right. I said, so I'm looking through it, which is fun. That's the fun part of it, going through it and looking at everything, seeing what you got, right, for that for that little investment. So she goes through the bag, she's looking through the bag. I like to do that, I like to do that with everything. I like to just look and see and, and kind of look through pieces. I even like to look through the pieces that I already have. Even if I'm not shopping, I like to look through the pieces, kind of organize them, just kind of see what you've got. So my video caller says, Dr. Lori, it was 10 pounds, it was a lot to go through, but as I went through pieces, I was very careful. I separated them out into categories like you've taught us. I looked for those pieces. I got my loop, right? I got my loop, which of course is going to be something that, that helps a lot of people, right? So got the magnifying loop that I recommend, and I looked, and here's what I found. I found this brooch. This brooch, which is marked sterling, which is marked George Jensen, Denmark by the famous mid-century modern designer, of course, George Jensen, with his very famous store in Copenhagen, Denmark. And if you're in Copenhagen, the last time I was in Copenhagen, you go down the street from Royal Copenhagen where they make the beautiful china, you walk down that same street, and there's, of course, George Jensen's beautiful store of all the silver and the jewelry and the candlesticks and the flatware, a fantastic place if you have a chance to get to Copenhagen. So traveling, of course, will open your world too. So she's in this bag, she's looking through things, she's got her loop, she finds this, she says, I recognized it right away and I wanted to get a video call with you so I could find out what it's worth. I said, all right, well, it's marked, it's beautiful, it dates, of course, to the middle part of the 20th century. I said, what did you pay for the 10 pound bag of jewelry pieces? She said, well, I paid $35 for all of it. I said, well, your one George Jensen sterling silver pin is worth $350. That was a real bargain too. This next real bargain is a family heirloom and it comes from an online appraisal that I did, a report that I did for someone who sent me a picture and said, I need a written report for this particular family heirloom. So when I looked at it, I thought, oh, I wonder why she decided to send this picture in. People send pictures, all different kinds of pictures, and it's fine. I just, I just wonder, what's the backstory? So I said, well, tell me the backstory. She said, well, Dr. Lori, you know, I helped my aunt, and she passed away. My cousin, her son, was a nice guy, and he said, you know, you've been a help to my mom. I want you to have something from her estate. Choose something that you like. She said, I always liked perfume bottles, but this bottle seemed a little bit different, seemed like a different category. So that was years and years ago. For years, I've been searching online and trying to find out more about this bottle, and I can't really find anything. I've watched your perfume bottle videos, and I've watched your videos about dressers and things on dressers and different types of bottles, but this seems to fit into a different category because it's ceramic and not glass. I said, okay. I said, well, what you have is called a scented water bottle or an eau de centaur bottle. And that bottle is typically used for scented water. So it has no alcohol in it. It's different from eau de perfume or eau de cologne or those kinds of, of basic pieces, which would have sometimes have alcohol in it and different scents. A censure bottle or a scented water bottle is for scented water and it's intended for children. It's oftentimes preserved in ceramic, and you could see it here. This is a ceramic bottle. It's actually Chelsea porcelain made in England, and it has a little bird finial on the top. The idea for scented water is to be used with children because it has no alcohol and it will spark the olfactory senses or basically your sense of smell. The idea is to use it on children under the babies and children under the age of three. And it was very typical in the 19th century for these pieces to be utilized with some scented water. Maybe it would be a lemon scent or maybe it would be another scent usually based on fruit. She said, oh, she said, well, she, she had children and I think it might have come from her mother or her grandmother. 
So I said, all right. I said, well, it's a 19th century piece. I did the research. I did the report. I explained to her what she has. And she said, well, I had no idea that it would be suitable for children and no idea what it really was has a beautiful scent, and this particular piece has that nice bird finial in the ceramic as well. So she gets it for free. Her cousin says, you should have it. You helped out my mother, your aunt, and I want to give you something. So she chooses this because it's unusual. You know, people say about the things that are unusual, pick something. It's great if you have great taste, but if you pick something in that in instance, make sure it's something that will remind you of that person who you might have lost. That's a good rule too. She sees the piece, doesn't realize anything more about it. I do the written appraisal and I tell her, well, for free, you did pretty well. And it's a nice family heirloom and I hope that you hold on to it for a long time. She said, well, tell me what it's worth. I said, it's worth $2,000. That's right, $2,000 for that particular bottle. Why? Very, very rare, unusual, and most people will mistake it for something else. So you've got to know. You're going to know what the value is when you know how to correctly identify these objects, and I'm going to help you do it. This next real bargain comes from a video call, and it was a Goodwill purchase. So my video client goes, my video call client goes into the Goodwill, and she's looking around. She said, I saw the pretty colors, and I was done. She said, I love glass. I love glass, too. Glass is wonderful as a collectible. Makes everything sparkle, looks beautiful in the house. So she said, I love glass. I saw this piece. I recognized this little tree, and it seemed familiar to me. I said, well, you, did you know that it was Murano? She said, well, I saw a mark that was an M on the back, but I wasn't really sure. That M on the back is, of course, the mark for Murano. And the Murano glass piece, you can see, is made with the very famous rods that are hand-blown called, of course, millefiore. Millefiore rods, of course, within the glass blowing center of Venice, made by Murano on this plate. And you'll see a lot of these. You can find these in places, but you probably can't find them for this value, this particular amount. She paid $2 for it at the Goodwill thrift store, right? And it's worth, it's a real bargain coming at you, $65. It's a beautiful example. No chips, no cracks, great condition, which is always key, and it's a good example of Millefiore as well. This next real bargain comes from a video call and a thrift store purchase. So my thrift store, cl my client says on the video call, Dr. Laura, you know, I grew up in thrift stores. I'm used to being around antiques. My mother taught me a lot and you've taught me a lot while watching your videos. And I've enjoyed myself doing that. So now when I go to the thrift store, I'm kind of fussy. I'm kind of picky. And that's what happens when you start to, of course, educate your eyeballs and learn this stuff. So she said, I'm kind of picky, but I liked this piece. It was a cool toy and I thought I would buy it. So she sees this piece, she likes it, and it's not particularly a rocking horse. She expects it to be sort of like a rocking horse, but it's got wheels. So it's more of a pull toy where a small child would sit on it and then someone would pull them. And that's what the wheels are for. She said, the area where you'd actually pull it, you know, the pull rope is missing. She said, but that's not a big deal. I said, yeah, that's not a big deal. She said, but I don't really know much about it. It's carved and it's a horse and it's on wheels. I said, well, first of all, I want you to look at the wood and I want you to understand that the decoration is important too to identify it. And this piece is very typically made in South Asia or from India. And this Indian piece is one which many people have mistaken for, of course, American pieces or European pieces. This piece is in the style, of course, of the great pull toys of people like, of course, Stife and some of even the great carnival um, carnival and carousel horses that you would see that are carved. This particular carved horse made in India, the early 20th century, was purchased for $10 at a thrift store and it's worth $1,250. That's a real bargain too. Notice the difference between, of course, the red and also the um, unstained, unpainted areas of the horse's body. That's very typical of carvings, from India of this time period. This next real bargain comes from a video call too, and this piece you recognize as a Japanese woodblock print. This Japanese woodblock print is made by a very famous designer, a very famous woodcutter, who works on mulberry, mulberry paper, handmade paper in Japan is very, very important, and also with cherry wood blocks. So the blocks are made of cherry wood. 
Now, this artist is known for herons, so he typically will, of course, make block artwork with the subject matter of this famous bird, the heron. So the artist, of course, Ohara Shoshon. Shoshon actually makes these pieces, makes these pieces in the early years of the 1900s. This piece was found in a thrift store. And here's what was the kicker. My video caller client said to me, Dr. Lori, I noticed the backboard, I noticed the, from the framing, the Shima Art Company, the company that actually framed it, I knew that Japanese, ma major Japanese woodblock printers use that kind of production and use that kind of framing technique. So having that mark on the back snapped something in his mind and got him to actually look closer at this piece. He said, I liked, the, of course, the contrast of the black and the white. I saw all the grains of the wood in the woodblock print that you talk about. And I thought, well, this is probably a pretty good buy. Let me look into this a little bit further. I said, so did you negotiate? He said, I always negotiate. They were asking $7. So a lot of you are gonna go, oh, $7, how cheap she wants you to negotiate. Yes, I do. I want you to negotiate everything. Ask, be polite, ask, it's not gonna hurt you. So he said, I asked for a discount and I paid $5 for it. I said, well, I said for your discount, you did very well. Your piece is worth $800. Works by this particular artist, Japanese woodblock prints like this one have sold, based on actual sales records, for $800. That's a real bargain too. I'm Dr. Lori, the PhD Antiques Appraiser. I hope you find your real bargain real soon. See you next time.